Himalayas is escape. It's beauty. It's it's hundreds and hundreds of square kilometers of barren land, of of craggy mountains, of gorges, and that's what really makes the Himalayas what they are. Royal Enfield entered India in 1955 and was used by the Indian Army straight off in the Himalayan regions, and that was one of the core reasons for its success. Ladakh in the Himalayas has been uh, like a mecca for uh, motorcyclists. It struck us that we hadn't made a special effort to make something for the land that we've so fondly been to over so many years again and again and again. Over the last 60 years, we've learned what it takes to make a motorcycle which can traverse those terrains in a, in a proper fashion. Finally, we decided that we could actually make a purpose-built Royal Enfield, which is for the Himalayas. What we wanted to do was to create a motorcycle that would just use the energy of the Himalayas and go with the flow of the Himalayas rather than trying to dominate them. And that was the entire starting point of our thinking for the Himalayan. All the natural elements of Himalaya contributed to the development of this motorcycle in terms of inspiration. It's not only the terrains, it's all about the ambience, it's all about the atmosphere, it's all about the internal feeling, it's all about the harness design philosophy, raw and rugged, simple, clean lines. It's for people with an adventurous spirit that want to see the world and go places, but it's also for people that want something that's rugged, reliable, robust for urban commuting and, and everyday use. So the new Himalayan is our first uh, all-terrain, go-anywhere, purpose-designed motorcycle. The LS410 stands for Long Stroke 410 and uh, the Long Stroke is the Royal Enfield DNA. It has an unique technology features, completely developed from scratch. It will give you a longer service life periods, longer maintainability period. The counterbalancer helps in reducing the vibrations and also uh, gives a very smoother ride. When you move into a off-road terrain conditions, uh, the low end torque helps you to move through obstacles in a better way. In the concept phase, we had uh, taken support from long-standing associates, Habs Performance. During this test program, we built a mule bike, which was highly adjustable. The first thing we did was lay out the motorcycle geometry, so it's getting an idea of the wheel sizes, the amount of suspension travel you want, the uh, ground clearance that you're looking to achieve. From that, you can then position the engine in the best place to keep the wheelbase as tight as possible and keep the uh, centre of gravity as low as possible. This bike's the first Royal Enfield to have monoshock suspension with linkage. So while testing the Himalayan on the Chennai racetrack, while most people put emphasis, a lot of emphasis on the off-road performance of such a motorcycle, it's very important to have really good on-road manners as well. When it came to off-road capability, we did go to India's finest motorcycle rider, C.S. Santosh, and loop the feedback back into the product. I find it really interesting to actually test our motorcycles, and I feel it's very important for the leadership to actually get their hands dirty and really understand what the motorcycle is about and make sure that we get it right. When we were testing the Himalayan, we were looking for a variety of terrain which included smooth roads, broken tarmac, snow, slush, sand, inclines, the works. After two years of development, I think I can safely say that all the team here really pleased with how the bikes come out. We've tested it under pretty well every condition any prospective owner's going to encounter. A good bond between the rider and the motorcycle and that's quite essential when you want to go out on a tour especially to a place like Ladakh. You know in those valleys when you're riding and that thump reverberating through that it's just uh, it's just a great uh, experience. 
the motorcycle has actually been designed with keeping in mind the uh, touring requirements, which means it had to carry luggage. So luggage mounting frame, hard aluminum panniers, which are strong enough, but light enough. Soft luggage uh, frame in the front of the vehicle to allow for extra luggage, which is jerrican. The whole set of gear has gone through as much torture test as the actual motorcycle has gone through. Stamp of authority came from the Himalayan tests. The confidence in the motorcycle is when it crossed all these obstacles and went up to Kadungla. I feel we've really accomplished what we had wanted to, which is to build a motorcycle that was purpose-built to take on the Himalayas. In the Himalayan, we've created a bike that is as comfortable off-road as it is in the city, giving the opportunity to go anywhere and really enjoy any environment or terrain. A lot of the things which will help you in adventure touring will actually help you in your daily commute. Suspension travel uh, will help you make your ride blush. Road tyres will ensure that you have the kind of grip when you need it. And the manoeuvrability which will go over rocks will also help you through traffic. People are now starting to go out a bit more. They want to explore, they want to see more, they want to get out of this rut of you know, your daily office life and screens in front of you and living in a, in a nearly artificial world. And they want to actually explore and go out and be free and be singular in their approach. The idea is eventually to find an equilibrium between man, machine and terrain. And I believe we do that with the Himalayas. We know that there are places in our backyards which we never really venture out to. A bike like the Himalayan is quite an apt tool to discover the world around you which, you're, which you see and you're curious about but you've always ignored.